Welcome back. So today I want to introduce you guys to a new tool that I discovered a couple of days ago called Trace Journey. And this is particularly interesting for everybody who works in the print on demand space or whoever uses Midjourney in order to create digital assets or images that they then want to use for things that are printed or you want to put them on shirts, you want to put them on mugs, books, doesn't matter. Trace Journey is interesting because it allows you to do a lot of the things that you would normally do in an external editor, either in Photoshop or maybe even with some online based tools right inside Discord. And it interacts with the images that you create within Discord with the Midjourney bot as well. So Trace Journey is really particularly interesting for everyone who's not very savvy with all of the editing tools because it just you stay within the environment that you're already used to. You click a few buttons. It's very similar to how you would interact with the Midjourney bot. But let me maybe just show you how this works. I'm going to move myself to the side here, just so you guys can see what I'm what I'm doing. And the very first thing that we need to do is we need to join the Trace Journey Discord server. And I'm going to show you a link right below here on the screen, or you can check in the description below to find out how to get there. But I'm going to go straight to the Trace Journey Discord server and what you'll see right here is it starts off with you got a start here channel here at the top that'll give you some you know quick tips to go to check out the video tutorials and i mean they're not not super sophisticated but they, they kind of explain to you what you need to do how do you vectorize an image how to upscale an image how to edit it it's it's very sure these guys are pretty new they they're they haven't been around for a long time so everything is kind of still in an upstart mode uh, then there's an FAQ here, uh, announcement rules. But the main thing that you really need to know about are these three channels here, because that's where you're going to be working. All right, so normally you would be able to add this Discord bot into your own server, just like you would do with the Midjourney bot as well, if you were doing all of this on your own server, which is obviously a little bit more convenient and is also a bit more private. Um, but unfortunately, they, according to the, I'm not sure whether it was in the FAQs or in the announcements, I think, yeah, FAQs, and it says right here that they still need to go through a verification process with Discord. Uh, and for the time being, you can't add it to your own server right now. I think there's a certain limit. So for the time being, you gotta you, you kind of need to use it right here within their server. And so if you're not particularly keen on prompting within, for example, the Midjourney bot test channel, so because you don't want everybody to see what you're trying to do, um, I mean, I mean, there's not really going to be a way around because you still need to, you know, get it edited here. But if you don't want to do all your test prompts over here, you can still stay in your own server. So, for example, I'm going to go back here and within my own channel here, I'm going to create, I'm going to try to create a design for a t-shirt. So this is for all the print-on-demand people out there who are particularly interested in the vectorizing part of what Trace Journey can do. So I'm going to start off with 2D vector illustration t-shirt design for Halloween. And then I'm going to say, which, uh, which pumpkins and ghosts and aspect ratio four to five, cause that tends to be best for t-shirt designs. And let's create some designs. Ha. Huh, and you see, I forgot something. So one of the things that trace journey can do is it can also remove the background on images. And I kind of forgot that that tends to be better on a light or, or white background. So here I forgot to stipulate that I actually want a light background. So I'm going to have to change this just, but just have a quick look at these images because they're, they're pretty awesome. Huh? These are really, really nice, but we need something different. So I'm going to change my prompt real quick for a second. And I'm going to say t-shirt design for Halloween on white background. And we're going to generate these one more time. All right, cool. So these look really awesome as well. I'm probably going to, I think I'm going to work with either the top left or bottom left one. Anyway, so I'm still in my own Discord server. So you might be wondering how the hell am I going to get these into the other Discord server? Well, one of the ways of doing this is you right click and I'm going to react with the, well, technically you could, the normal way would be to use it, do it over here to hit the add reaction button. And then you pick the envelope icon and what that then does is we tell the Midjourney bot to send me this message here and it shows me this job with all of my images. And then I copy the job ID that you see here, copied it. And then I'm going to go back to the trace journey 
server and I'm going to enter show. This is a midjourney bot command show and then it asks me for a job ID. So I enter the job ID, hit enter, and this will make this particular job pop up within the trace journey server. All right. All right, cool. So from here on, we need to do something very specific. We need to pick one of these images and upscale it. So I'm going to pick the bottom left one. I'm going to hit upscale number three. And then as soon as this upscales, and this is taking a bit longer than expected. Wow. This is slow today. Anyway, so as soon as this upscales, the trace journey bot will detect that it's been upscaled. And what you can see here now is that you've got a whole bunch of buttons, each one doing something very specific. And it's always with respect to that particular image that we upscaled. So I can either vectorize it, I can remove the background, I can upscale it. I don't I actually haven't tested upscaling, so I don't know how much further it upscales. Getting tasks, tags. So the last time I tried this, this actually failed, but it might have been because I was working on an older image that I had upscaled and it I had actually, I had already progressed throughout. I, I mean, I just actually done other things already in between. Then convert will allow you to convert it to JPEG, PNG, I think, and then WebP. Brightness, contrast. I haven't tested these, but I, I suspect it'll increase the heat brightness and it will increase the contrast, whatever you want to do. And grid split is basically just, it splits those four images into four separate images. Now, that's not really something you need to do in mid journey because you can just react to the grid with the envelope icon and it'll just split them up for you. But what we want to do in here is we want to create a vector design from this. So what we will do is we were going we're to click on the remove BG button, and this removes the background on the design that we created. So you see it's processing, it's started, but it's pretty quick. And it's returned us a PNG with a transparent background, which is cool. All right. So let's remember to keep this, but that doesn't mean that it's a vector design yet. Right. And the reason why we want it to be a vector design is because it allows us to scale the design endlessly, which is really important for everything that's related to printing, right? Because you need big files in order to get a high resolution. So what I would do now is I have these buttons again, and this again is with respect to this image that we have here, the one that's already had its background removed and I will hit vectorize. And so it starts processing as well. And this doesn't actually take that long. It takes a little bit longer than removing the background, but I'm actually quite surprised how quickly it does this. All right, cool. And so what you see is processing complete, enjoy. And this is basically just to have what an SVG file looks like when you open up in a text editor, it has all these sort of looks like HTML markup a little bit, but an SVG file is a vector file, just like EPS or, you know, your classic Adobe Illustrator format. So what I would do now is I would download this file. So this is going to download to my downloads folder. And what I'll do is I'm going to open it in my finder, right click, open with affinity designer, which is the or the most likely tool that you would use from the affinity suite for vectors, right? And what you can see is it has opened up the SVG file in affinity designer, and you can see all of the curves here on the right, which just shows you it's a, it's a vector. So what I would normally do is I would group these and then you can just scale the design endlessly as you want. doesn't really matter. I mean, everyone who is in print on demand will know why I'm doing this and what the whole, the point is. Uh, I don't need to explain this to you again, but so now you could basically add a text or whatever on top. You could save it in different formats, different dimensions. It doesn't really matter, right? So this is just the whole benefit of getting it vectorized real quick. And trust me, the quality of this is considerably better than what you would get if you did this in Adobe Illustrator, which also has an image tracing feature, which people have been using for ages, but to be honest, it's utter crap. So this is really, really, really good. This, this changes the game completely in print on demand more than anything for, right? Just because of the sheer workflow and the productivity gains here. But anyway, so, um, I want to show you something else that trace journey does and trace journey also allows you to create mockups, right? Okay. So let's go back to my private server. And what we're going to do now is we're going to imagine, and we're going to create a mock-up 
of dark gray t-shirt on hanger because, well, it's going to create an image of a t-shirt on a hanger, which is going to be the base layer for the mock-up that we're trying to create, right? Remember, we're trying to put our design on top of a real piece of clothing. And the reason why you would want to do this is because maybe you're selling on Etsy or you're selling in your own online store. So you want to have a mock-up to show what the product actually looks like in the end. So let's wait for this to finish generating. Awesome. All right. So what we would do here is I'm just going to pick one of these four. I'll probably take the top left one. I'll upscale it because we're going to not save it, but I'm going to copy the image so that I can use it in the mockup function afterwards. All right, cool. So what I would do now is I'm just going to save this just to make it even easier. I'm going to call it number, uh, number one. And I'll go back to trace journey here. I will take the design where we removed the background. This, I will also save to my, whoops, I'm in the wrong folder here. I'm going to save this to, where am I? Save this here, number two. And what we would do now is we would go to the mockups channel and here we enter front slash mockup. And then you see, it gives us similar to how the blend command works in Midjourney. We can now select two files. We start off with number one, which is our mockup shirt. And then the second one is our design. So what I've done is I've, you could also do this with just simple copy and pasting or drag and dropping. Um, I just did this because it's a bit easier to record, but now we have the shirt and we have the design and we hit enter. And this is going to take a little bit longer, uh, especially because first it's going to ask me what I want to do. So select fabric color, bright works for bright and medium colors, dark for works for dark. Yeah. So I'm going to pick dark because I picked dark gray. Then it's going to show me another button and then I hit adjust size and position here. Mm -hmm. What this does is it opens up a new tab on the trace journey server and it will show me my mockup and it will ask me to resize my design, place it exactly where I want it. So I did this, it's already pretty well placed and I'll hit generate mockup and this starts the process and I can actually close this tab, I believe. Yes, I can. And there you go. This actually, it did a bit of a better job on the black shirt that I tested earlier, but this will give you an idea of what it does, right? And then you can open this up in another tab, you can save it, and then you can basically just upload it to whichever sort of store you're selling on. So this is what Trace Journey does. And I think it's really, really neat because the whole vectorization process is just something that's been a huge pain before. So just to give you guys an idea of what it costs, because it does come with some free credits, but, but there's a limit. I think it's about 10 credits that you can use. I'm not exactly sure which features require credits. If it seems like the vectorization part is the part that requires the credits and not so much the other features, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. The way you would subscribe is by entering sub and then it'll show you these three buttons. And then you've got the choice of starter for $10, advanced for $20 and pro for $35. And that just decides on whether you have 150 jobs, 500 jobs or limited jobs per month. Right? So this is basically how trace journey works. You've got your free credits, head on over to the discord server and give it a try. Maybe it's something that you can use. So that's it for today. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.